Dear students, let us start the discussion on today's newspaper that is 7th August 2017. The first article subsidized rail losses that is by Prime Minister's office. So previously, whatever the losses incurred by the railways due to operations in, in inefficient areas such as hilly regions and the strategic locations were compensated by Finance Ministry. Recently, Finance Ministry has stopped doing this and the matter went before the Prime Minister's office and it has ordered for the Finance Ministry to compensate the railways. Now here we need to understand um, the role of the Prime Minister and the Prime Minister's office for interdepartmental coordination. This is the best example to reflect the same. Now, coming to the editorial page, let's talk about supplemental income rather than the universal basic income. That is what is the central idea of this article. So universal basic income is very much in the news. So what exactly it mean? Universal means all the people irrespective of the socio-economic status shall get the benefit from the government. Basic it means it has to fulfill their basic needs. Income it means the, mo the money has to be provided or benefit has to be given in the form of cash rather than in the form of goods and services. These three forms the important aspects of the universal basic income. So in this context, let us understand few more points over here. As India is a developing country, any proposal like this will create a huge financial burden. So what are the ifs and buts associated with universal basic income? So universal versus restricted is the first argument. If universal is provided, as every citizen is eligible for the program, the leakages are going to be less. And second, the discretion of the bureaucracy is going to end and the citizen will have the choice either to accept or not to accept the particular benefit from the government. And whenever there is, it is restricted, obviously the bureaucratic discretion is increasing, exclusion errors comes up and poor are the people who are getting worst excluded from the benefit programs. And second is, it has to be in goods or services or it has to be a cash transfer. So whenever the government provides for goods or services as subsidies, it has some intended objectives to achieve. If you talk about healthcare services, maternal mortality rate, infant mortality rate reduction, etc. On the other hand, if cash is being given, how this cash is spent is a question. So most of the times, cash transfers, if they have to be operated, we have to believe in the rationality of a man who is spending that money. Cash transfers, these have become an important aspect are successful with regard to Brazil. There the cash transfers were conditional. What do I mean by conditional? So the cash transfers are made only when certain objectives are achieved. So that's where the challenge is. The goods and services which are being delivered, we say we say cash, these have to be different. So cash provides greater opportunities or greater choices to the individuals. Services, they target the intended objectives of the government. But the major problem over here is, whenever the services are provided, the quality of services given by the government are very poor. And that's where coming up the marketization of the services, where services will be delivered by the private sector and government will be paying to the private sector. And another criticism in this marketization is development of crony capitalism. And the third thing is, we have to talk about um, the financing of the scheme. In financing the scheme, there is a huge budget which is necessary to the tune of 5 lakh crore rupees. So many people have suggested that ending the corporate benefits is one way forward to finance this. Obviously, that will discourage the incentive for the corporate companies to ensure the growth in the other sectors. So these are the three arguments which are being put forward by Mr. Rangarajan. So way forward is to create a supplement income to the existing programs and services rather than creating the universal basic income. That's what is being expressed. Private power public apathy. This is related to the domestic workers. The workforce in domestic sector is not regulated in India. They do not get any of the social benefits or they do not have any legal recourse in the case of loss of their revenue. Whenever they demand for their revenue which is supposed to be legally paid to them, 
they are facing criminalization harassment etc and um, government shows no intention to bring in domestic workers regulation act uh, till date so it did not even sign international labor organizations Con Co convention 189 which clearly states that protection has to be given to the domestic workers so as domestic workforce is increasing in india after liberalization it is the time for the government to look into issue carefully and provide for them the necessary protections skill don't detain this is about right to education so as per the right to education act um, no detention policy is very critical to retain the child at the school it means um, up to 8th class the child cannot be detained the second point here is today the major problem is about dropout rates one of the reason for the higher dropout rate um, is the low quality education lack of connection between the education and the livelihood opportunities so providing for the skill based education which the germany and singapore have excelled can be a way forward for india it will help or it will provide for the twin goals to educate the child and also to move up the economic productivity at a later stage so after minimum school education the government of india has to focus on skill development next is vice president naidu it is about mr venkai naidu coming into the office of vice president of india remember that um, vice president's office do not have any stated functions uh, he gets its salaries and emoluments as the chairman of rajya sabha now let's get into the next page a blight that did not really happen remember artificial intelligence machine learning these are defining the news industry and in this context um, how artificial intelligence can go wrong it has been recently exposed when facebook has to shut down its entire uh, uh, servers for the reason that uh, the chat bots these are able to control the entire process of the facebook by themselves that is what the author exposes here and capital adequacy ratio so this is related to banking sector so banking sector to what extent a bank can remain viable it has been explained as part of the capital adequacy ratio now coming to the news um, swiss happy with india's data security so sharing of the banking information is uh, necessary with regard to arrest of the money laundering is concerned so many of the countries have expressed concerns over the indian data security and swiss expressing a positive note is a good uh, development for india gadkari reaches out to iran if you take the india iran relations they are on a roller coaster right so we have signed an agreement for chabahar port uh, and it did not move forward in iran and we expect that to be an alternate route to afghanistan and recently it has clearly stated that um, chabahar port is also open for the other countries for development and second the supreme leader ayatollah khamenei has compared the kashmir problem to the israel palestine problem and third farzad b oil fields are not being awarded to ongc videsh limited and the next point is the india has reduced the imports of oil from the iran as the tensions are escalating in retaliation to this iran has reduced the credit period to india now the let's get into pressure on nepal over doklam standoff so here china and india are stuck at the doklam plateau and it is an issue between india china, india china and bhutan now nepal is also facing the heat so nepal is trying to calibrate its reaction between india and china relations over here the most important article is nine high courts oppose all india judicial services so all india judicial services to be established and the constitution also recommends for the same an judge to the level of the district court a district judge shall be recruited through all india judicial services this is what the constitution states but as of now the lower judiciary is under the administrative control of the high courts and it is expected to be dispelled with now high courts are not interested to lose their administrative control over the lower judiciary that's what this article is talking about 
Now, China says dialogue is vital to tackling North Korean crisis. So, remember the North Korean crisis and Mr. Donald Trump has offered benefits to China, trade benefits to China, hoping that it can play an important role in the North Korean crisis. So, in this context, the China's position is US and South Korea has to withdraw the third missiles which are placed over there. And they also have to stop the military exercises. So, China did not use its leverage completely. That clearly is visible from this particular statement which has come up over here. And the next page, new vice chairman is coming to Niti Aayog, Mr. Rajiv Kumar. He clearly states that high oil taxes curbed consumption and investment. So it means increased oil prices, they will have a multiplier effect and they are going to kill the consumption and thereby the demand in the economy. As the demand is not increasing, the production will not increase. So we have to make the oil prices reduced so that there will be greater consumption, greater production and it leads to further employment. That is what is the argument of Mr. Rajiv Kumar over here. In the last page, I have given you the notes and it is available at uh, lyx.in slash test prep. Uh, sorry, lyx.in slash civil prep. I was uh, totally sick for the last 10 days. Uh, so I was not in a shape to upload my uh, videos and uh, I'm really sorry for the inconvenience. The program it never stops. Unless I am sick, I'm uh, not able to perform. Right. Thank you very much. All the best.